Hey guys, and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. It has been a hot minute since I have filmed a reading vlog. I think it's been a couple of months, but this is going to be a Halloween reading vlog. I have really struggled with finding a way to fit reading vlogs into my regular life. It's been really hard for me to do, hence the reason I haven't filmed one in a couple months. The last ones I filmed were over summer before I had gone back to work. And now that I've been back in work, I'm just finding it hard to find time to vlog. But this week is a little bit of an exception because today the kids had a half day and I was able to leave work a little bit early once the kids were gone, so I got out an hour early. And then tomorrow we have professional development until noon and the kids are working home virtually, so I get to leave around lunchtime. In the school where I'm at, the kids' parents had the option to either send them to physical school or do virtual school, and we, the teachers, are live streamed. So I go into school every single day, and about half the kids are there and half of them aren't. So tomorrow, all of the kids are going to be learning at home. So I'll be able to come home after my professional development, and I'll have an entire half day to do some reading. So I figured since it was Halloween, I would do a reading vlog and I actually a couple days ago put up a poll on both Twitter and my YouTube community tab to see what genre of book you wanted me to vlog. And I had three books that I was going to read. I had Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. That was the book I was going to read if you all chose horror. And then I had The Silent Patient, I can't remember the author's name, if you guys chose Thriller. And then I had a grim dark fantasy. And for sure I thought that you guys were going to choose horror because it's Halloween and it's not a genre that I normally read. But y'all must know me <laughs> because you chose grim dark fantasy on both polls. So that's what I'm going to be vlogging myself reading is a grimdark fantasy book. Um, but I did start the horror book when I realized that y'all were going to choose fantasy and that's the way the polls were trending. I just went ahead and started the horror book. So the horror book that I'm reading is Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. I got this from my local library and I literally have 20 pages left. I could not power through it last night. I was just too tired. So I said that I would go ahead and finish that today. So I think that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this last 20 pages and then I'm going to share my thoughts with you guys because I personally don't read hardly any horror. So I'm happy to share with my thoughts. I'm happy to share my thoughts with you about this book since it was recommended to me and I know it's a Netflix movie and it was really popular on booktube at one time so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and not list book out and share my thoughts with you guys and then i'm going to show you what i plan on reading for the rest of the weekend hey guys so it is later it's about eight o'clock and i didn't update you because well, first off, I did finish Bird Box, but literally as soon as I finished, my husband came home from work and I went downstairs and ended up um, cooking dinner for us. And then we watched an episode of Hellstrom on Hulu and those episodes are like an hour long. So we just finished and I told him that I was going to come upstairs and read for a little while. But it's dark outside, so usually I rely on like the natural light coming through this window, so I'm sorry if the lighting is super awkward. I don't think I've ever filmed at night before. But yeah, I did finish Bird Box, so here we go. And my thoughts on it, I thought it was just okay. Really, I feel like it was just straight middle of the road. There was nothing about it that I hated. There was nothing about it that I loved. It was just an okay time. I feel like it's fairly forgettable, but at the same time, there was nothing that I absolutely despised. Um, I feel like one of the main problems I had with it was that I felt like the characters were incredibly underdeveloped, um, mostly the side characters, um, the characters that were in the house with Mallory, because I feel like ma the majority of this book takes place in that house and I felt like all of the characters were the same character. There was nothing about them that differentiated one from the other and half the time they were talking and, and, the, and the author was naming these people's names and I'm like, who's this person again? Because they just didn't have their own identity. And there are gonna be some spoilers. I do wanna chat some spoilers real quick. So if you have not watched this, I'll go ahead and link timestamps down below for when it's okay to start watching again. But spoilers here, so I really did not think it was plausible for Gary to have stayed in this house because if you're opening the door to let him out, 
wouldn't everybody hear him come back in? Wouldn't they hear two set of footsteps? Wouldn't they hear the cellar door opening? I just found it just really unbelievable that Gary was in the house the whole time. I don't know. And I just felt like that whole plot line was just completely underdeveloped. It just wasn't given enough time, given enough time. It just wasn't given enough sustenance. And I don't know why I'm still holding this book up. Um, another thing that I really didn't like and found a bit disorienting was the scene where Mallory gets bitten by the wolves. I don't know. I just felt like some of the way that the scenes were written were just a bit confusing. Like, were, were these... First off, I don't know where this story is supposed to take place, but at least in North America, in the United States, like, the only wolves we have are in Alaska and mostly around, like, Wyoming and... and Yellowstone National Park and stuff like that so I don't know where these wolves came from that bit her when she was in the boat it's just the whole scene was just weird to me I don't know so I know that this is his first novel so I feel like it just might have been a case of the author needing to better his craft but I just found it to be parts of it just to be not well written um, and I just didn't feel like the characters were fleshed out enough. I didn't feel a connection to really any of the characters. Mallory, yeah, but the other ones that played such a big role in the book, not so much. So I don't know. I don't read a lot of horror and I think this is considered horror. I just, I didn't find anything about it suspenseful or scary or really even on the edge of my seat kind of thing, which really stinks because I really wanted to have like a good suspenseful book during the Halloween season, so I'm kind of disappointed. So anyway, that's went way longer than I meant it to, but that's my thoughts about Bird Box. I'm glad I read it, but in the end, just it was very lukewarm and unmemorable for me. So I can return that to my library. So what am I reading now? Um, I am still reading Oathbringer. <laughs> I'm still reading Oathbringer. I am on page... 630. So I am, I think, snag dab about halfway through. I know I'm at least at the 50% mark. Holy cow, that's heavy to hold up. I'm at least at the 50% mark. And I've actually been listening to the audiobook for this. Um, I did get it from my library. So that's really helped me to kind of get through some of these more tedious sections. And it's, it's going. It's going. So there's that. And then... I have the grimdark fantasy that I'm going to be reading is Priest of Bones by Peter McLean. This was technically on my October TBR, but I thought that I wasn't going to get to it. So that's why I put the poll up because I was like, okay, I'll just roll this into November if I don't get to it. But I am going to be able to get to it and it's only 331 pages. So I really think that I can knock this out over the weekend. But this is a grimdark fantasy that I had seen around Goodreads at one time and then I saw it on Book Outlet probably like a year ago and for a couple bucks and decided just to buy it and my cat is stepping on my computer. Excuse me. Come here, buddy. Oh, and we dropped books. You go there. Okay. So I decided to buy it and it's just been sitting on my shelf since and I haven't really heard anything about it. I haven't heard anyone review this book. I haven't heard anyone talk about this book and all I know is it's grimdark. My cat is being bad. Okay, we don't do these things. We don't do these things. No, we don't. So I really don't know much about this. All I know is that it follows a guy that went to war and came home from war. And I think like his city has been kind of overtaken with like rebels or some sort of, I don't even know, some sort of people that want to need to be in his city and he like does everything he can to get it back. That's kind of the gist I got from the synopsis, but it's being compared to like Joe Abercrombie and stuff like that. And I didn't even know there was a sequel out, but apparently the sequel is currently out and I'm definitely interested in reading it because it was announced also that this has been optioned for a TV show, which I feel like you hear that all the time that books are optioned for movies and TV shows and then nothing ever comes of it. So I don't really know how much credence to give that statement, but I thought I would go ahead and knock this on my TBR since it's been on my shelf for so long and see if it's a series that I want to continue. So it is currently 7.55 in the evening. So I think I'm going to go ahead and read for 30 minutes. I'm going to set like a 30 minute timer and I'm going to see how much I can get read in 30 minutes and then I will check back in with you guys. 
Hey guys, so today is Friday and it's about four o'clock in the afternoon and I just wanted to kind of update you on my reading. So I did get off of work early today and then my husband and I went out to get some lunch and then I came home and started cleaning. So I didn't really read that much, but I am on chapter eight of Priest of Bones, which is page 57. So I haven't really gotten too far into this and I'll be completely honest with you, I was contemplating a DNF. And I know it's super early and I usually like to give myself at least 100 pages before I DNF a book, but I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm reading something that was written by a 12 year old boy. That's really the only way I can describe it. Like it jumps right into the fighting and it's like just gratuitous fighting and killing. So even the first scene in this book was fairly off-putting and it was we have these characters and we don't even know anything about them. We hardly know their names and they enter this like in tavern, you know how it is in fantasy and they kick the innkeeper out. And then two of the guys are dragging his daughter upstairs to go rape her. And there was, that's like literally in the first like three pages that happens. And I was just like, whoa. And our main character is Thomas Pity, I think is how you say his last name. He's like, no, 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 we don't rape people in our gang. <laughs> but it was just, it was the weirdest way to start a book. And I just found it just off-putting. I don't know how to describe it. So I almost feel like our author's trying too much to be grimdark. I don't know how to put it. And I think I'm going to keep going with it because I want to see if it gets any better. And I feel like if I start a new book at this point, I'm not going to be able to finish it in time. Um, like over the weekend, whereas this one I probably can, I hope. And not only that, but I'm afraid that if I stop this and then I pick up another book and that what I that one I don't like, it's gonna put me in a huge reading slump. So that will be like three to four books in a row that I haven't really liked. And that's a lot for me because then I start just not wanting to read. So I'm gonna keep going with this for a little while longer and then maybe by page 100 if I'm still really not feeling it or liking it or finding that the characters aren't really improving then I'll decide to DNF. But I just wanted to update you guys. Um, but like I said it's a little bit after 4 now so I think I'm gonna read maybe till 5 and then I'm gonna do a 40 minute full body workout and then I'll just kind of finish cleaning and be able to read for the rest of the night. So I will check back in with you guys in a little bit. I made it to chapter 14, which is page like 99. So I'm going to pause here and I will say that it has picked up. So I've kind of gotten an understanding of the context that this plot is taking place in because I just felt like the way that the author started this book was just jumping into the fighting and <laughs> the weird kicking people out of the inn whatever was just maybe not the best way to start the book because it took a while for him to kind of explain things but we are following a man named Thomas Pity and he was conscripted into the army to go fight this war along with most of the young men from his town and the war's over and they go back and everything's just been ravaged everyone is starving homes have been destroyed there's a plague going on and he comes home to find that all of the businesses that he had going when he lived there have been infiltrated so he starts trying to like reclaim all of his businesses and his homes but it has a very like gangster like mob feel because it sounds like and, and people in this town call him a gangster and a thug so I'm getting like heavy, heavy, like gangster movie vibes from this book because Thomas is bribing the governor of the city, you know, the officials to look the other way. He controls a part of the city and, you know, he takes care of his people. But then we just learned something kind of interesting and I, I'm going to say it's a spoiler. So if you haven't read this and you want to skip over it. I'll put a timestamp, but we just learned that he is was before the war acting as a double agent for the crown to spy on the governor of the city. So I feel like the plot has picked up, definitely has caught my interest a little bit more. And it, I still feel like it's written like a 12 year old boy wrote it, but it definitely is not as off-putting as it was at first and I think that I am going to continue with it because like I said, it's only 330 pages, I've already read 100 pages. And it's definitely not like a hard read. I am going to go do my workout because, ow, I'm going to go do my workout because it's six o'clock and if I wait any longer, I'm going to 
make an excuse and say I'm too tired. So I'm gonna go do my workout and then I'm going to clean up the house a little bit and my husband is playing golf, he plays golf every Friday. Um, I'm gonna clean up the house a little bit and then I'm gonna try and read some more. Maybe I'll get to page 150 by the end of the night. So I'll check back in with you guys, like I always say, in a little bit. Hey guys, so I forgot to tell you, um, I got some bookish mail and I took it out of the mailbox when I got home and then completely forgot about it, so I thought I'd just go ahead and unbox it here. But I got um, two books from Thrift Books. I have used Thrift Books many times and I'm like, I try not to use them as much as I used to because I feel like you run a risk of getting a crappy book despite what it says on there if it's good or kind of good I forget what it is because I've gotten like water damaged books and books with the pages falling out that were supposed to be good quality so but I was on their website and just kind of seeing if there were any books available that I had wanted for a while and there were two and these are both library copies I can see right now that they are library copies they have the library stamp on them but the first one I got was Mem by Bethany C. Morrow. This is an adult science fiction book that I read last year, and I usually can get the library um, with the library covers off um, without damage to the book. But this is a really short book. I think it might be a novella. It was the first book I ever read by her, and it was one of my favorite books of 2019. I gave it five stars. And it's a very short book, and it's like a rewriting of history. So I believe in like the 1930s, there's a scientist who can figure out a way to extract memories from people and basically put those memories into these kind of hosts that are these zombie-like creatures that keep remembering the same memory over and over and over. And the reason that they do that is so that the original people who had these memories can be free of that memory. So it's usually used for like bad memories and things like that. But there's a mem, these like zombie like beings are called mems, who actually functions like a human being and is able to create her own memories. So it just kind of follows her journey. And it's a very character driven book. It's more like speculative fiction. Um, but it's one of the few books in my entire life that has made me tear up. I think there's only been three or four books that has made me tear up this is one of them so I decided to just go ahead and get it it's in good quality so I'm really excited to have this and then I got The Girl in Red by Christina Henry I have heard a lot of things about Christina Henry she usually writes like fairy tale retellings but they're more they're adult fairy tale retellings and this one is a retelling of Red Riding Hood but I think it takes place in like a post-apocalyptic dystopian world and I've heard that it's kind of creepy I forgot I can't remember but it was another booktuber if I can remember who it was who was recommending Christina Henry I'll link them down below but um, that's how I learned about Christina Henry and I started looking up her work and I was like oh she writes all these retellings I love retellings but then I'm like these are really twisted retellings <laughs> so I'm hoping that she's an author that I will like and because she's got a whole bunch of backlisted books that I could read but yeah Red Riding Hood a plague's going on post-apocalyptic setting it sounds exactly right up my alley so this one I got for very good condition for a couple dollars and then I think this one was just good condition um, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get the sticker off and then it's ripped on the front here so like in my personal opinion like I don't think this is good condition for a book like book snobs you know we want our condition of books to be nice so but I just, I kind of knew that was going to happen because I've used thrift books before and I was okay with it. So yeah, hope you guys liked that quick unboxing. So I'm going to go ahead and keep reading. I only have about 20 pages left before I'm at page 100 and I made myself some coffee and I thought that this would be a fitting <laughs> Halloween mug. So I'm going to drink my coffee and go ahead that's my cat. Um, try and get to page 100 of Peace to Bones, and I'll check back in with you guys in a bit. Okay, we got all the cats in the room today. You guys are going to have to excuse the mess. I was filming videos yesterday. So we have Cinny Bear, my tabby face. Then we have my Lynx Siamese cat. And then we have Tyler. Hey guys, so today is Sunday and I didn't, I don't think I vlogged at all yesterday. 
this is why I don't vlog. I'm horrible at this. And it was Halloween and <laughs> it's supposed to be a Halloween vlog. Um, but I hope you guys had a great Halloween. My Halloween was not too, too eventful. We just handed out candy to the neighborhood kids. And then I told my husband that I would watch The Crow with him because I've never seen that movie. Like, I was a 90s baby, but that movie came out when I was, like, really young. And I don't remember it. I just remember it coming on TV all the time and kind of scaring me. So I'd never actually seen it. So I told him I would watch it with him, and I watched it. Um, but I wanted to update you guys on what I'm reading. So I am still reading, obviously, Priest of Bones. That was kind of what I was going to prioritize during this uh, reading vlog. And I'm on page 176. So I'm making really good headway with this. And I'm actually kind of warmed up to it. Like when I first started, I definitely wasn't feeling it too much, but I've definitely warmed up to it. Um, there's really, it's a really quick read. The writing is really easy to get into. It's definitely an interesting narrative style because I feel like the voice that the author chose for his character really, really fits the type of character that he is. He speaks simply, you know, he's not an educated man. Um, so I feel like that really, really mirrors the type of character that the author wanted to portray. And we finally are learning more about the different characters and the fantasy element, like the magic element was introduced. One of uh, Thomas's crew, a 12 year old boy, is some, has some sort of magical ability. So they just are trying to figure out what to do with him. So the book is definitely, I'm glad I didn't DNF it because I, I am enjoying it. It's not like my favorite book I've ever read of all time, but it's definitely entertaining, entertaining enough. So we'll have to see how it ends to see if it's a series that I'm interested in continuing with because right now it's too early for me to tell and I don't know. I will say that it's definitely grimdark. And then I'm still reading Words of Radiance. I've been listening to this on audiobook and I just got to chapter 70, which is... Oy. Um, page 200, oh no, <laughs> 694. So this is a 1200 and something page book. So I'm only, oh my God, I'm only like 55% of the way through. And I'm just looking at this. I'm like, this book is massive. Oh my gosh. And it's funny because we had like a bad weather yesterday and then a cool front came through. So it was crappy all night last night and then this morning and now it's like absolutely gorgeous and the sun is out and it's beautiful and I went out and laid on the deck out back listening to my audiobook and I fell asleep so all of that headway I got in host ringer I can just like scratch it because I fell asleep so what I think I'm gonna go do is it's like 3 30 in the afternoon I think I'm gonna go for a jog and I'll listen to Oathbringer while I'm jogging just because it's so nice outside and um, then when I come home, do some things around the house. We're going to have chicken parmesan for dinner tonight because I already put it in the crock pot. So that is really my plans. I'm going to go for a jog and, I don't know, continue reading later on tonight. I don't know if I'm going to update you guys again with what I'm reading. I am thinking about extending this vlog through Wednesday because I started on Wednesday just making it a whole week because Tuesday here in the United States is election day and I have the day off for election day because... To go vote and also because they use schools a lot as voting centers so i'll go to work monday but then i have tuesday off so i will have like ample time to catch up on some reading so i think i'm going to extend this vlog through at least tuesday but that's all i have for you guys for my sunday update and i will talk to you in a little bit <music> I just got back from my workout and I think I'm gonna do a 10 minute ab workout just to kind of like top it off and then I'm going to cook some baked broccoli to go with our chicken parmesan so I'll show you how I make baked broccoli 
Our baked broccoli is super, super easy to make. So we have our florets here. Look how green they are, yum, yum. Then all you do is coat them in some salt and pepper, about two tablespoons of olive oil, and then I put some garlic powder, but I suppose you can put whatever seasoning you want. And then you just bake them at 425 degrees for about 12 to 13 minutes. And they're pretty scrumptious. So I wanted to go ahead and close out this vlog by talking about Priest of Bones by Peter McLean because I did finish it. So that was the whole point. I wanted to try and finish this book during this reading vlog and I'm so glad that I did. It's a short book. It's 330 pages and it's definitely not a super hard read, but I did end up enjoying it. So I'm glad that I stuck with it. The beginning was just a little bit hard to get into. I will say that this writing style is a little bit hard to get into. I, I'm having trouble like trying to explain this writing style so like it's very tell instead of show and I feel like it's just told from someone's point of view I think I said this earlier that just is like not educated and is more like street smart so just the the voice is very different in that regard I'm not sure if I've ever really read a book that read quite like this so it just took me a little while to get applicum acclimated to the writing style to the main character's thoughts to the voice but once I did I found that I enjoyed it I will say that this book is very grimdark I'm not someone who necessarily gives trigger warnings all the time but I feel like this book warrants trigger warnings because there is scenes of child molestation and child rape in this. It's not super graphic, but it's graphic enough to be disturbing. And there is violence against women in this book. It's not graphic. It's just mentioned, obviously, fighting violence in general. There is drug use also. So there's definitely a lot of trigger warnings in this book. So it's very grimdark in that regard. Definitely an adult book. But I'm definitely glad I picked it up. And I actually picked up the sequel from my library. I'm glad that they had it because they didn't have this on ebook or audiobook, so I'm glad that they had the sequel. So I'm going to start this as soon as I'm done with Oathbringer, which I am 82% of the way done. I'm going to finish Oathbringer <laughs> before like the end of the year. I'm just kidding. In the next couple days. So I'm going to start Priest of Lies as soon as I'm done with Oathbringer. And I really liked that Priest of Bones ended on a trope that I personally like. So I'm hoping that Priest of Lies like really plays up that trope and I'll enjoy it a little bit more. And it's also like the exact same length. So I feel like Priest of Lies won't take me long to get through it all either. So yeah, I'm really glad that I was able to start a new Grimdark uh, fantasy series this year um, because I feel like there's not that many out there other than Joe Abercrombie. And I think I've heard that, what is it, Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence is pretty grimdark, but I think that might be a little bit too grimdark for my taste just based off what I know about it. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close out my vlog. It was a successful reading couple days, and I hope you guys had a good, safe Halloween, and I will see y'all in another video. Goodbye.